Warren, thank you so much for coming in today. I'm so excited to talk to you. Syed, thank you for having me. I'm super excited about this interview. Great. Before we jump into the interview, I'd like to tell you a bit about myself and the company I work for. So uh, we are a medium-sized uh, app exchange, app, exchange uh, app maker, and I'm the lead developer there. And we're looking for more developers to join our team so that we can continue to deliver an awesome product for thousands of our customers. So that's uh, basically about me and my company. And I would love to hear more about you. Please tell me about yourself. Cool, yeah. Uh, my name is Warren Walters. I have a background in computer science. I've been in the Salesforce space for about four years now. And I'm super excited that you guys have afforded me the opportunity to interview with you. Um, a little bit more, I've been in a few different role development roles. And my most recent role was as a Salesforce consultant um, at a, I'll say, startup company for uh, being the main development resource there. So you're a Salesforce consultant or a Salesforce developer? Um, mainly, I would say a developer, but I've been leaning a little bit on the consultant skills as well. So definitely joining that startup helped me build those skills up. Okay. And what do you do as a developer? What kind of tasks, projects do you work on? Uh, generally, it's code development, Apex, Lightning Web Components, you name it, I've probably worked on it, uh, at least in some capacity. I'm generally a little bit better in the back end side of things, so with Apex, but I'm very dangerous when it comes to Visual Force pages and some of the newer technologies like Aura. As a computer science, coming with a computer science background, I think you're one of the few people, uh, typically, a lot of the developers, Salesforce developers, Salesforce consultants I know are career changers. Uh, so coming from a computer science background, you had an option between being probably a front end developer or a Java developer or something else. Why did you choose Salesforce? Yeah, so uh, there's a few different reasons behind that. One of the main uh, reasons was my internship in college it was at a company that had Salesforce and I um, I interned, learned Salesforce admin and development there and I just kind of ran with it on top of that. So I had that internship, but when I graduated, I did have the option to move between um, going to like a front end or back end development position in another technology. But something that really stuck with me with Salesforce is the flexibility and speed to market. A lot of Traditional development takes a lot of time. You'll have to have the backend people spin up a server, set up your uh, SQL database and your front end people build all of the forms and things like that. With Salesforce, everything is kind of baked in together. You'll have your configuration and all of your development when you need it. And you can do things like spin up a website or a community pretty quickly. So all of that was uh, a lot of the reasons that made me stick with Salesforce. Did you ever regret sticking with Salesforce? Maybe some of your friends in other fields are making more or growing faster? Um, I don't really regret it. I've had a very uh, healthy career inside of Salesforce and in the ecosystem. I, it, Salesforce does allow you to work with a lot of the hot technologies, especially web-based things. So you do get to use a lot of the skills that are all over the place. And you know, if people are doing better than me, great for them. And you know, I want to learn from them, but I'm definitely happy where I am. Yeah, definitely. You, you seem to have done well being a senior developer in four years. Uh, all right, so let's talk about coding a bit. Can you tell me what are you, the best practices you adhere to with Apex? Sure. A lot of the best practices with Apex stem around some of the um, 15 commandments that are out there, but a lot of that is around like not putting SQL queries inside of loops and making sure your overall uh, data architecture and code architecture is up to snuff. So for example, that's having one trigger per object and enabling your admins to um, be able to access your code in things like uh, custom settings. 
You also have some of the gotchas like avoiding hard codings of any IDs. And then um, one of the big ones is using maps for a lot of your information and your gathering of uh, a lot of your coding in general inside of Salesforce. You're going to use a map for it. Um, why is it important to use maps? Yeah, maps are really important because they allow you to easily sort and store your information inside of Salesforce. So take, for example, you have the you're working on a list of accounts and, you know, every object or every account has a specific unique ID and you have the object itself. So you can put that ID or that account in a key value pair inside of the map, which will make it a lot easier to generate and search for that specific account and do a lot of other things as well. So searching is one of the main ones. Instead of writing a, a for loop every time you want to look through a list of um, a list of accounts, you can just put all of those inside of a map and do your searching that way with the ID. Uh, there's also shorthands that you can call when creating a map to pretty much store everything that you call from a, a SQL query into that map, which is very helpful. And then it um, the, the overall structure of reducing the search times is what really uh, makes it a lot easier and a lot better to use pretty much everything you can do with a list you can do with a map. And why not always use ma maps? Why do we use lists? Uh, lists generally you want to use them when you don't have the ID. So say you're just re you've just created the record and you don't have the ID, or um, you 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 know your own you're gonna iterate through all of the items. Then you can go ahead and uh, use that list for those section. Or you don't have a unique key, you want to group everything together in some sort of um, by the status or you know everybody in the status in one in one specific list, something like that. Okay. Okay. So we talked about the best practices, best practices with Apex. Can you tell me about the best practices, the three best practices you adhere to with triggers? Yeah, one of the main ones with triggers is just bulkification. So making sure that you are using, you're not just doing or inputting your trigger logic on one specific item. You're you're able to do it on multiple items generally that falls in the line of 200 items at a time. Also, keeping your trigger logic outside of um, the trigger itself. So making sure to call it handler classes that will do a lot of, of the filtering and the information parsing that is there. And this all kind of wraps together with like a trigger framework that you could use. Um, so making sure that you're using the correct type of trigger framework for your organization. Maybe that's a really elaborate one if you have a complex org or even a lighter one that um, you'll need to use in, in cases of just you know being able to turn off the trigger really quickly. And along with that, um, goes the trigger context as well. So using the context variables like trigger.new and the new map, or even um, things like is before to making to make sure that you are calling your code correctly in the correct order. When you want to add logic into a trigger, into the trigger handler, mm -hmm. how do you decide whether to put it in the before or after? Right. This is a good question and it comes up often. Generally, you want to have things in the before trigger um, when things have not saved to the database yet. So that's doing validation and updating that specific, that same record before it gets saved to the database. So that's like changing um, if a status gets changed, let's say, for example, we're also updating a different field on that specific object. When we want to move into the after trigger is when we are updating related objects or we want to do some sort of um, action after the database has been saved. So moving that information, uh, once it's actually saved, we can call a different record or call a related list. Uh, a related object to update information there. So Warren, if if I have a trigger on the account object and I'm doing some updates to the account record, 
but I also want to update the child contact records. Mm -hmm. Where would I put that logic? Uh, I would say to put that logic on the after trigger, just in case um, we are doing updates, so we can use the before and we'll have the account ID from that, but we wanna make sure that the database is up to date with all the information that we need. If this was like a before insert, then we wouldn't have the correct IDs um, to query the system to update the contact. So we're gonna do this on the after trigger. Okay, but if we're doing an update, we can put it on the before? We can put that on the before if we are doing an update, uh, we will have the IDs by that time. Got it. Uh, what, uh, what do you do when you're stuck? Uh, a lot of times when I am stuck, I'll reach out to the community to see what else they have going on. If there is any other resources out there, you know, the Stack Exchange and Google has been a part of my you know journey through Salesforce. So there's plenty of resources out there and a lot smarter people than me that can definitely answer a lot of these questions. Um, but the first thing I'll do is reaching out and searching to see if I can find any other examples or anything else that uh, I can find because I definitely don't know everything that's out there. So you, you use Salesforce Stack Exchange a lot? Yeah, I'm pretty much on it. Every day. <laughs> How many reputation points do you have on the Stack Exchange? I'm actually pretty bad. I maybe only have like a hundred points on there, so uh, I don't answer as many questions as I do review. But when I get the chance to, I'll, I do try to update them. Okay. Okay. Do you also read some Salesforce blogs? Yeah, I'm pretty frequently on the blogs in the morning. So there's people like David Liu or even Salesforce Chef, which I like to check all the time and making sure that I'm up to date on my development things. There's also things like Salesforce Ben, which is more on the admin side, but they do definitely have really good content all the time. And as a Salesforce developer, it's really good to make sure that you are up to snuff on your administrative side as well as development. And how do you ensure that you stay up to date on the latest Salesforce updates? There's so much coming out every with every release. Uh, do you have do you have some strategies on how you know the latest and greatest so that your code uh, does uh, make use of those that are relevant? Part of it is staying up to date with the release notes. Uh, there's the SFDC Exchange Discord, which does a really good uh, abridged Salesforce uh, notes, and then being on Trailhead as well. You know, whenever I have free time, making sure that I'm I'm getting new badges and staying up to date from there. Do you also attend Salesforce Developer Community meetings? Yeah, I go to the community events pretty often. You know, they're held once a month, so I try to get there when I can um, and making sure that I'm out there with the community and meeting other developers and seeing how they're thinking. And that's even a place where you can get help when needed if you need that you know, face-to-face -face time and you can get to somebody. Great, great. Do you, do you work in your current job? Do you work with Salesforce admins? Yeah, we have a few admins at our current job, and it is um, something that we definitely have to build for is working with admins and having them, you know, be able to interact with code. What has your interaction been like with admins? Do you feel like you need to teach them, help them uh, through the Salesforce challenges? Uh, how do you find how do you find it working with them? Yeah, so a lot of times it really depends on their level. So for more junior admins, I do like to coach them since I've seen a good amount of Salesforce related um, issues and problems and, and problems to solve. Uh, but for more senior admins, a lot of times they may be uh, more knowledgeable than me. So we bounce ideas off of each other and work together to make sure that we're building the best solution. To empower Salesforce admins, do you have some strategies? Generally with the 
Uh, empowerment of admins, I like to use custom settings and metadata types, which they're able to edit in configuration. Also, you can build invocable methods or create invocable methods so that admins can access your code from process builders or uh, inside of flows even. So this gives them the power and control to kind of, you know, build their own little triggers inside of process builders, call the code that you need. You can make it as robust or as simple as you need with a few different parameters um, and making sure that they have access to a lot of the information and to call the code that they need. Great, great. All right, that's pretty much it with my questions. Did you have some questions for me about the company? Yeah, um, can you tell me a little bit about your background and how you got started in Salesforce? Yeah, unlike you, uh, I did not have a computer science background, but I had the fortune of accidentally running across Salesforce uh, after I finished my MBA and I fell in love with it. I, I saw how powerful Salesforce is with just a few clicks. Uh, you can make someone's life easier. Um, you can boost their sales. Mm -hmm. You can improve their customer experience. And so I, I said, forget about all this business consulting st I did before. I want to become a Salesforce professional. I want to become a Salesforce developer. And uh, so that was about four and a half years ago. Um, and I've, it's been a bit, a bit over a year that I'm in my current role as this company. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very exciting company. We have a lot of customers, a lot of smart customers um, across different geographies, different industries from all around the world. And our app is, uh, the use, use space of the app is growing very fast. And um, I think we have very exciting opportunities here. And then an additional question that I have is, what does the team kind of look like and what would my role be in this uh, team? Yeah, so we have about uh, six developers in total. Yeah, th three of them are onshore, three of them are offshore. And we're looking for an additional developer to join our onshore team. Uh, the key improvements we're working on in our app right now are twofold. One is we want to make our app more enterprise ready because we are getting a lot of new big customers. Mm. And second, improvement we're working on is converting our Visual Force pages into Lightning Web Components. Awesome. So cool. these are the two areas that the team is tackling currently. Okay. And then um, I have a few more questions, but I know we are running out of time. Um, I guess the last question I have is when can I expect to hear back from you? Yeah, so I took down uh, notes on our discussion, I want to discuss your candidacy with our CTO. Uh, we have been interviewing a couple of people and I will let you know our decision within three days. Awesome, awesome. So uh, I think that's it. That definitely works with my timeline. And um, you know, I'm super excited about this and thank you so much for taking the time out to interview me. Yeah, thank you so much, Warren. Talk to you soon. Alrighty, Syed, have a good one.